You're listening to episode five of the Dogs Are People 2 podcast presented by Dingle Days. I'm your host, Drya Dingle, and I believe that anything can be learned. If you believe that's true as well, then keep listening because this is the number one show to bring you the best tips, strategies, and technologies for pet parents. So let's get after it. Today on the show, we're going to be talking about setting up your scent work search areas and some of the regulations that come along with that. Now, I, for one, love being prepared for competitions, both in day-to-day life and sport. And in training scent work or canine nose work with my dog, it's no different. So in this episode, I'm going to save you some time and discuss the scents, the number of containers, the types of containers, arrangements, distances, and all those types of goodies, time limits, distractions, required calls, the size of the search area, so you can be prepared for your first trial. All that and more in this episode of the Dogs Are People 2 podcast. So let's get after it. So welcome back to today's episode. I'm your host, Raya Dingle. And today we're going to be talking about staging your search area. These are just a few things that you can be mindful of when you're going through your canine scent work search with your dog. So the first thing I kind of want to talk about is scents. Scents when it comes to searching for novice work. Okay, so Generally speaking, the scents are going to be birch, anise, and cloves, but in the novice scent work searches, we're going to be focusing on using the essential oil of birch. So that's something that you're going to need. There's a number of locations and I'll link some in the show notes or in the YouTube description if you happen to be watching the replay on where you can acquire some of those things. With regard to the containers, there's actually specific regulations with regard to the dimensions for your boxes, but in the beginning stages, you kind of just want your boxes to be 10 identical boxes. As quickly as possible, I would honestly say you want to kind of get into the habit of being able to use whatever you have lying around the house, whether that be your luggage or different buckets or different boxes, brown boxes, white boxes, different size boxes, some type of container that has a lid so your dog can't easily get into whatever element is you're searching for because we don't want them to ingest that. We just want them to be motivated by the smell of that so you build that value to odor but we don't want to have anything open to where it's not a container where your dog can get into it and potentially harm him or herself. With regard to the arrangement, okay, so when you go to lay your boxes out, it was 10 identical containers that you've identified. You want there to be two rows of five containers. That's the basic arrangement. As you move along, there'll be different types of arrangements, such as a a small circle or something like that. But in the beginning stages, you're fine with just two rows of five. And I'm going to jump into a few of those specifics so you can hone in on what exactly to train with your dog. And by the way, all of this is being referenced from the AKC scent work regulation. So that will be available as well in the description below or the show notes so you can go and reference the same things that I am referencing with regard to the search area specifically if you're looking at the AKC scent work regulations I am referencing AKC scent work chapter 7 section 4 for class specific requirements or container classes. So let's talk a little bit about the actual spacing, okay? You want it to be 12 inches all around, okay? And that's actually 36 inches between each row. And that's going to basically allow for the maximum accessibility for all persons and dogs. And that's what's so great about canine scent work is the sense that it is open to everyone as long as the handler and the dog are able to compete. And that 36 inches of space allows for maximum accessibility for those who may have specific handicaps that warrant special needs devices to help them compete and keep everything open to everyone, which is so awesome. For the boundaries, at a minimum, you have to mark the four corners of your search area. Now, this search can be interior or exterior, and if it's a safe area, it can actually even be an off-lease search. However, you want to at least mark the four corners of the search area to delineate where the search area is happening and where your boundaries are. Learning canine scent work, pet photography, and pet technology can often be a grueling process for pet parents. Every other week, join Dry Dingle, filmmaker, YouTuber, and dog trainer as she reveals her best tips, strategies, and technologies that helped her furry friend best share in her life. Whether you want to learn more about novice canine performance sports, animal photography, or the best pet technology to fit your productive lifestyle, the Dogs Are People 2 podcast is the podcast for you. So let's get after it and share in a new episode every other week. This is why I love canine scent work or nose work or whatever you want to reference it by because you can really just put this together with things like tape around the house. Maybe you have some engineering tape or some 
some fencing or some chalk or flags or anything else that's basically capable of marking off your search area in the YouTube video that I'll be putting out later this week um, where we talk about and illustrate setting up your canine scent work search area. I actually use some cones that you may have for sport you know, just doing your basic daily activities. Now, with regard to the number of hides in the very, very beginning stages, there's only going to be one hide. So you don't really have to worry about there being any surprises later on. If you move up in the different categories, there's actually going to be more than one hide. In fact, at some of the more mastery levels, you don't know exactly how many uh, hides there are. And you'll not only have to call alert, your alert basically indicating to the judge that the scent has been found, but you'll also have to call your finish. But in the very, very beginning novice stages, you only have to call your alert because it's kind of indicating your finish. It's one and the same in the beginning because there's only one hide, if that makes sense. Now, with regard to novice canine scent work searches in the very beginning, your time limit is two minutes to find that one hide, to have your dog show that change in behavior, whatever that may be, whether it be pawing, scratching, uh, maybe the ears perk up a little bit, or you see however you're in tune with your dog, but you only have two minutes to find that one specific hide. And keep in mind that this search area is somewhere between 200 by 400, so it's not very big. So once you build that value to odor and your dog recognizes birch and you have identified and worked with your dog enough to recognize their alert, whether that be a down, a sit, whatever you have your dog do to indicate that they have found a specific target odor, you'll have two minutes to indicate that and call alert to the judge on site. With regard to distractions, there's no distractions at this level. As you move through the different levels of canine scent work, there will be distractions introduced as a part of the, the actual search that you could actually potentially slow your dog down if you don't train those distractions. But in the very beginning stages, it's really designed for you to progress. Just make sure that you call your alert. And with regard to that time, if I go back to that a little bit, just realize that the time will start as soon as any of your body parts pass the designated start line. Remember, we marked off those four corners for where our search area begins. So once you pass that threshold, your time starts or when any part of the uh, dog's body crosses that same line, okay? But remember, you only need to call your alerts at this stage. So those are the very basics. This wasn't a very long lesson, but I just wanted to lay that foundation down and be sure to tune in to the Dingle Days YouTube channel where I walk you through and illustrate in kind with my German Shepherd dog, Disney, exactly how to set up your AKC scent work practice area. Regardless of how much space that you have available, you can do this. So maybe your practice area won't be to scale. Maybe your containers won't be exactly to the regulation, but there'll be 10 identical containers or even, you know, building a little bit of a challenge for your dog using the varying containers because really it's not about the container itself, but more so building value to that odor and having the drive and the motivation for your dog to go and find that scent and the relationship for you to recognize when that scent has been found and notify the judge. So I hope this helps you a little bit in your scent work journey. More new pet content coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'll leave the links in the description for our AKC scent work score sheet. If you'd like to do a few practice runs or scrimmages, shall I say, with your own dog, you can save yourself a little bit of time by downloading the canine scent work score sheet so you can indicate and keep record, keep track of your progress along the way. Until next time, continue to get after it. You've just listened to an episode on the Dogs Are People 2 podcast presented by Dingle days. If you like this episode, make sure to leave me a review on iTunes and share this episode with your friends on social media. Just don't forget to tag me at Dingle Days. If you want even more good stuff, make sure to go over to www.dingledaysphotography.com to find the show notes in our blog and head over to our Dingle Days community on YouTube so that you can connect with other followers of our training methods there. I can't wait to see you there and thanks again for listening in. Until next time, continue to get after it and share your best life with your furry friends.